Hey guys, a couple months ago you saw me move this server into the StarTech rack that I set up down here. And uh, this is my home server that serves a number of virtual machines, it's my network attached storage, and various other functions on my home network. Now when I set up this rack I had moved this hardware from a mid-tower size case into this Supermicro CSC 826 enclosure. This is not server grade hardware, this is a very old Biostar motherboard with an Intel 3770 CPU. It's got to be about 10 years old. I built this right when the 3770s came out and that was approximately 2012 if I recall correctly. Now this system has served its purpose incredibly well and has been rock solid but it is definitely time for an upgrade. I'm pushing the limitations of memory and uh, I am out of PCIe slots. I really wanted to get a 10 gig network card installed in here and um, while I do have an available slot for it, this motherboard refuses to start up with that 10 gig card installed. So I finally decided to call it quits with the system and today we're going to build it out with a new motherboard. Here's how this is set up currently. We've got the Intel CPU, we've got 32 gigs of DDR3 memory, we've got an LSI 9200-8E uh, RAID controller, we have two NVMe risers with Western Digital Blue 1 terabytes. This is a RAID 1 and is used for the virtual machine image store. And then we have the 2.5 gigabit NIC that we installed a while back. This is the 10 gig network card I wanted to install. I got it for like 15 bucks on eBay. It's a pretty good deal. A Mulex and it is a two port SFP plus. So when I tried to place it in this PCIe X16 slot, which is wired for actual X16, uh, the motherboard just refuses to start. Now the interesting thing is if I allow this motherboard to begin posting and then I ram this card in the slot while it's turned on, it does boot up and work fine. So I'm not sure what the hang up is uh, but that's definitely not how you're supposed to utilize PCIe cards. And then off to the side here, I have two 2.5 inch SSDs. Those are in RAID 1, and that's been my operating system boot drive. And before I begin completely disassembling this, I want to get a measurement of the power consumption at the wall so we can compare it before and after. I will be upgrading this to a CPU with more cores and a server grade board, so I'm not expecting watts to decrease by any means, but I do want to see a comparison of what it's using before and after. It's been idling for approximately 10 minutes now and we're sitting around 70 to 73 watts. And out with the old. And one thing I really like about these super micro cases is they are designed to fit a variety of ATX standard motherboards. And all you have to do is move these screw studs around to these various connection points to fit your various size motherboards. So this is the motherboard I'll be using for this build. This is a super micro X10 SRI-F. This is uh, DDR4 memory. It takes the Intel E5 2600 V3 and V4 CPUs. You can see it's got quite a few PCIe slots here. We have four that run at PCIe 3 and two that run at PCIe 2. Uh, we have 10 onboard SATA ports. It's got eight memory slots. It can take up to 256 gigs of RDIM and I think 512 gigs of LRDIM. So we've got USB 3 obviously, we've got dual 1 gigabit network, and we've got an IPMI or remote management port. This is an excellent feature I was looking forward to because now when I have to troubleshoot a problem, I don't have to come down here and connect a monitor and everything. I can simply connect to a remote console over this IPMI port even if the server is shut down. One interesting thing about this motherboard is these sell for about 250 to 300 bucks on eBay. And rather than paying that price for this motherboard, I found that I can buy an entire 1U server with that motherboard in for about half the price. So this is a Supermicro CSE813M and these were listed on eBay for $175 with free shipping. I put in an offer for $165 um, and he accepted and I actually bought two of these at that price. So, uh, so one of these servers I used to pull parts from and that's where this motherboard came from. I do have a plan in mind for this server I think if I can work out the pricing but that will be a future project. All right, so removing this heat sink here, you can see the CPU slot. Uh, so this CPU is an Intel Xeon E5 2630V4. It is 2.2 gigahertz. I think it throttles up to about three. It's a 10 core, 20 thread. It was approximately 85 watts, I believe. So I am moving from four core, eight thread to 10 core, 20 thread. That's a huge improvement. I think it goes in this way. And then this arm goes down first. We have the left arm. Now this is the heat sink that came with this motherboard. You can see it's very short. It's made for a 1U enclosure. So I pulled this one off of an old motherboard I had that I took out of one of these CSE 836 enclosures. Going to use this one instead. It's the same size on the CPU end, 
but uh, you can see it's got quite a bit more mass to it. So I've got a nice pea-sized drop of Arctic Silver Thermal Paste. For the memory, I have four sticks of this ATEC 16 gig DDR4. Uh, this is 2133 megahertz, so that will give me a total of 64 gigs of memory. And I've got eight slots, so it also leaves four free slots for expansion later in case I want to bump it up to 128. So using four sticks of memory, I've placed those in the blue slots, which are labeled DIM A, B, C, and D1. Now the IO Shield did not come with this server, obviously, since it was in a 1U case. That's not a problem. It was like a $7 part on eBay. And uh, it does fit, but it looks like I've got to punch out a few of these knockouts here. So now we can slide our new motherboard in here. So we want to make sure all nine of these screw holes line up, and it looks like they do. So we're good to go. Now one thing about this new motherboard is that this heatsink doesn't have a fan. And I think that's obviously going to be a problem, because I had replaced these fans with these uh, lower RPM, just because of the noise the original fan cage generates. Now I do have the original plastic baffle which went over the motherboard like this and uh, allowed those fans to direct the air directly over the CPU. So I am going to return this baffle and I think I'm also going to return the original fans here. Now the reason why I took them out originally like I said is because they are way way too loud. However they were plugged into a Biostar motherboard that they were not designed to operate with. This Super Micro motherboard has four fan headers located here and here and is specifically designed to work with those fans that were originally installed in this chassis. And uh, we'll check the noise after. I'm hoping this motherboard will control those fans nicely to keep the noise volume down. All right, so I've got the fan baffle installed. I've got the original fan cage put back in. So these are the fans that came with it. These are UltraFlow Nidetech, and they are 12 volts, 600 milliamps each. So these consume a lot of power. So they simply drop in the new cage like so. Uh, so then lastly, I was using a pair of Kingston SSDs in the old machine for the boot and OS drives. And these are 120 gigs. They were in a RAID 1. 120 gigs is fairly small, especially when you consider the amount of swap needed for 64 gigs of memory. Picked up a pair of these Intrepid SSDs on eBay. These are OCZ, 800 gigs, SATA 3. Um, they are used. They had about 300 terabytes written to them. They are rated for approximately, was it 5 to 5.5 petabytes uh, so there's plenty of endurance left, and these will be more than sufficient, you know, to uh, host the operating system and the boot uh, information for the server. All right, so I've got the SSDs just stuffed in back there. Uh, not the correct way to mount SSDs or the correct place, I know. Um, but I really don't want to use up my 3.5 inch bays in the front with a pair of not swappable SSDs. So that's where they're going to go. Additionally, my front drives are actually mounted through an extra SATA controller. Um, and I want my host SSDs to be tied directly to this motherboard. All right, so with all these components connected, uh, we're at a point where we can turn it on and kind of see what the sound profile is like. Okay, that's loud, that's not too bad. What I'm particularly interested in though is if uh, the motherboard will throttle these fans down as it starts up here. Oh, it does, look at that. It's super quiet now, and I bet it'll be even quieter with that lid put on. Wow, you can hardly hear it. That network switch is actually louder than the server is. This will work out pretty nice. And we can see up here on the screen it's actually starting to boot up, so I'm going to go ahead and shut it off now before it gets too far. Uh, so here's my card layout. I have the SAS controller in the first X8 slot, then I've got an NVMe card, then I've got the uh, 10 gig Ethernet card, then I've got another NVMe card. Now this NVMe card is obstructing that fan a little bit there. I'm hoping there's enough space to get some good air circulation. I didn't want to stick it in that last PCIe slot there because while that's an X8 slot, it's only wired for X2. And then I purposely left this X16 open here. I would like to get some sort of dedicated GPU in here uh, just to do hardware decoding in particular for my security camera system. Uh, so the last thing to do before we power this guy on is I have my new transceiver here. This is a 10 gig RJ45 transceiver. I think it's good for about 30 meters with the Cat6 cable. And you can see here I did get the expansion for this Aruba 2920 switch. This is a 10 gig RJ45 module. And they're quite a bit pricey. This module was like 150 bucks or something. 130, 150, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, now I sort of cheated and have this server completely installed already. So once we turn it on, it should boot up for normal operation. I ended up using Oracle Linux 8.6. 
In the past, I've used CentOS. However, CentOS has now shifted from downstream Red Hat to upstream Red Hat, uh, and I didn't want to use their CentOS 8 stream thing. Uh, so, so at that point, I decided I would go with Oracle Linux, which is free to download, free to use. All right, put the cover on. And I've got my monitor up here. You can see it's booting up. It does take a couple of minutes to run through all the post checks. One thing I did notice when this starts up is it doesn't like that transceiver. It does say incompatible optics. Replace with compatible optics for card to function. Um, however, it does actually work fine with that card in there. Now this monitor is cutting off the left hand of the screen, which is kind of annoying despite my auto adjustment. Um, so I do see it has network connectivity and it should have an address of, where is it, uh, dot 109. Before I do that, I wanted to note how quiet it is. So it just sounds like normal computer fans. It's not even, you know, loud. I mean, these, these enclosures I built down here are louder than this is, so I think this is going to work out perfectly. All right, so we have 192.168.0.109. Root, okay. We wanna make sure we have the 10 gig network here. Let's see, was it ETH tool BR0? And it says speed is 10,000 megabits per second. That is perfect. That's 10 gigabit ethernet. That's exactly what I wanted. On the new server, completely idle. It looks like we're just under 100 watts. So we did pick up approximately 25 watts. All right, I think that's where we're going to wrap this video up. I've got all my VMs moved over, my software package is reinstalled. Uh, my Chia farm is farming again. It's been running great for approximately 24 hours now. I am very pleased with the setup and I'm looking forward to what I can do with it going forward. One idea I've been tossing around is potentially moving the Chia full node uh, to a virtual machine now that I have resources available. Uh, it really was constrained on memory before, so now that I've got 64 gigs, there's plenty of headroom and uh, that would actually eliminate uh, this little Dell mini PC up here that I'm using for the full node currently, so I uh, still haven't decided just yet. Speaking of Chia, I am looking to grab another JBOD enclosure. I would very much like it to be super micro to match what I have in my rack currently. Uh, however, the prices of some of these components are cost prohibitive, even on eBay, uh, compared to the alternatives like the NetApp enclosures. So I do know somebody who may be selling one. I'm just waiting for a decision and a price quote, I guess, at this point. Otherwise, I'll be stocking, you know, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for a while to see if I can find a deal. Otherwise, if you found this video interesting, please hit that like button before you go. Any questions or comments, you can leave those. And thank you very much for watching.